Hi everybody, welcome to my channel, showing you China of the 21st century. And today I'm here with a special guest, Lee Barrett. Hi. I'm, I'm at your home now uh -huh. in Shenzhen. Which district are we in? Uh, Longgang. Longgang. I drove an hour and 40 minutes to get here. And uh, I'm here to, to talk to Lee about his YouTube and basically what he's doing these days. Um, having one of the biggest channels, YouTube channels in China? One of them. One of them <laughs> is modest, 320,000 followers that grew quite quickly in the last two years. All right, Lee, well, thank you for hosting me. You're welcome. And uh, you are going to interview me right after this. I am. So I will put the link to your video uh, right here. And vice versa. Yes. Yeah. And um, let's start off by how did you start being a YouTuber? Okay, so it was really, Ollie had had a channel before. I've always wanted to do it. And I was a little, I wouldn't say nervous, but I just didn't make the jump to do my own. And then when Ollie came out to China, I said, look, shall we start a YouTube channel? And that's what we did. Right. Um, and it was mainly because there's a lot of misconception in the West. So that was one of the things. And also to, to fund our lifestyle here, basically. Right. And that was when? Oh, so about two years ago now. So it was, it was, it was actually shortly before um, COVID kicked off. So end so, of 2019. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And did you think that two years later you'd have 320,000 followers? Not at all. It took us by surprise. Right. Uh, I mean, Ollie, Ollie had a channel when he was younger that he got up to 100,000, and that's pretty big. Yes. But to, to now be at, at sort of 320,000, it's a bit surreal. It's hard to comprehend, really. So you're doing it full time? Yes. Yeah, full right. time. Both of us. So what's your process of making videos? Do you strategize? Do you plan? How well do you um, organize it? We don't do that much planning, although we are starting to do a little more planning. Um, we, we write down some ideas and then we, we pick one of those ideas or we've traveled to somewhere and we just, we, we don't do any script or anything like that. We just pretty much put the camera on, shoot some footage, talk about where we are. And we always end up with probably five times more footage than the actual video. Then Ollie will just scrub through all that footage Put a video together so normally for a, a 10 to 15 minute video we'll probably have an hour to two hours footage okay um, including drone shots as, as well and then ollie will pick all sort of the best bits out of that footage to 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 do it so ollie edits ollie's the editor yeah i tend to do all the more sort of administration stuff like the project planning for when a video is going to go live getting the subtitles onto there um, you know, answering emails and stuff like that to, right. to various things, yeah. But Ollie so, does all the editing. And it's a full-time job now. It is, yeah. And, and pretty quickly, you got to be a full-time job. Yeah, I mean, we we got to... I mean, it was really down to COVID, and that, that kind of forced us into it. And, and by the end of sort of COVID, or the, the main uh, sort of push of COVID, we, we were up to enough where we were just making enough to be able to... To live on not not extravagantly by any means but just enough to, to live on then we, we've we've grown it from there right actually we were uh we were before this conversation talking about how much money you may make yeah and i was surprised you, you actually don't make as much money people would think with no, these no, amount no. of subs yeah i mean it's it's surprising people think you, you make an absolute fortune you don't we we make just enough to 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 live on really because you have some kind of fame obviously right mm -hmm. uh, at least you know around china um and I, I guess in other places too and then i guess people associate fame with money yeah and, and there's a lot of hidden costs like you know we have to pay for for the subscriptions to the editing software and photoshop and then there's the subtitling or cost money and, and things like that. so we do rely a lot on on donations as well as what we make um, right on the youtube channel. i was asking you before right what do you think about that about youtubers constantly asking for donations i think if you're asking all the time it's it's a bit too much but i think it's okay to solicit for donations because you know if if you take any other organization 
you have to pay for content, you know. Um, and there's a lot of work goes into producing that content. And we're trying to make better quality videos, which does take time. You need equipment. You need to get to places. Right, right. And, and you need to eat, you know. Right. You need to pay rent and stuff. So I think, I think it's a balance between doing some but not too much. Right. What part of the process, what part of being a YouTuber do you like the most? I like, me personally, I like doing, making videos where they're about technical things because that's my passion. So shooting the videos is the best part, getting to see new places, getting to experience new things. I think that's, that's cool. What, what video on your channel you remember the most? Your favorite video? Remember the most. It's a hard it's, question it's, probably. It's, probably got to be one of the factory videos maybe the the car factory or the e-bike factories a lot i really like that kind of video so do the videos you like the most get the most views i mean they are like the most by your viewers or not really not always i think i think you can see the passion for those come through more so sometimes they they do get a bit more um, engagement right um, but it's very, very random. Sometimes a video that we think is going to do really well doesn't do that well. Right. And the reverse of that happens. Sometimes we think, no, nah, it's not a great video. You know, it could have been a bit better. And we put it up and it does really well. You know, you yeah. just never know. Right. Um, what, so what's, what's the, uh, how is working with your son, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I would imagine this is not easy, right? It, it is, it's great, but it also has its drawbacks. Because he's a different generation, we don't always agree on things. But he's the more creative one. So generally, I leave the creative side of things to him. And I like after the more business side of things. Right. So we kind of have our separate areas. I don't interfere that much. If there's something I really strongly disagree with that he's doing, I will say something or I'll give right. my opinion. But right. Like he's very creative. He's also very into psychology. So he he does a lot of the shooting, and the the planning behind some of the shooting. And he he deals with titles as well. I make the thumbnails, but from some guidance for him, we we discuss that. But it's not too bad. Um, we've had our moments. You know, we, right. we we argue and quarrel, of course. But on the whole, it's good. Nothing too major. No, nah, not too major. Did, does he surprise you still sometimes? Like um, in a good way. I mean, uh... he's he's good. At, I. I think his editing is very good and he's getting better the more the more he does it the, the, the better he gets sure. and I also think that he comes up with some very creative titles too ah uh, so okay let's talk about that uh-huh <laughs> we spoke about it on WeChat in the, yeah. in, in the past um, you, you just said you make the thumbnails yes right? yes um, and he does the titles correct right who uploads the video me you upload the yeah, video yeah right so you guys discuss the title he just tells you uh, Dad, this is the title. Normally, it's Dad, this is a title. He's very into psychology, so he normally says, right, this is a title. Guys. Very occasionally, I'll push back if I think he's kind of gone a bit too far because we tend to try and use quite clickbaity titles. And right. Although it's, I don't like doing that, you have to be competitive to get the click to get the view, you know, because that's the way YouTube's gone, unfortunately. That's true. It, it, it's, a, it's a very thin and tricky line, right? It is, absolutely, say, yeah. Between trying to be captivating uh, and uh, and being clickbaity. Yeah, right? it is. And how do you, so how do you navigate it? Like, uh, we also say that uh, maybe some of your regular followers already know your tricks, yeah, yeah. right? So you, you had a video just the other day saying, China has no freedom or something like that. Correct, yeah. And then uh, I knew already it's going to be about how China actually has freedom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, we, we actually use that kind of reverse sort of right. logic. Reverse psychology. Titles, yeah. yeah. And, and most of our subscribers are very aware of that and they go, wow, great title. But you do get the odd one who maybe has just seen the title and not watched the video and they're like, oh, you know, or, or they, they also say clickbaity title. Um, but we don't get that much pushback because I say a lot of our subscribers are, are aware and, and they've only got to watch one or two videos and they'll see that the pattern, you know. So those, those are to, to gain new subscribers, right? Yeah. Or new viewers. Yes. Right? Yeah. And those new viewers may become subscribers, right? Hopefully. Right. So 320,000 subscribers, 
what's the percent in your opinion or from analytics even mm -hmm. right uh, I don't think analytics say that exactly right but like of Chinese people whether in China or abroad I'd say we've got somewhere between 50 and 60 percent of, of Chinese people but a lot of those are Chinese by their parents a lot of them have grown up abroad Right. But obviously they're still right. ch Chinese, and then I would say forty percent are Westerners. We have a lot of, of, of people from Malaysia as well. Actually. Malaysia, yeah, yeah. Is that Malaysia. Chinese descendant or something? I think some they are. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. I think a lot of them actually speak some Chinese. Right, um, right. What, what's your uh, channel goal? Like we, we spoke about it, right? Some of the some of the China YouTubers um, are uh, saying that they want to push back on the anti-China propaganda. Right mm -hmm. now, your channel has travel videos, um, technology, yeah. and political commentary. Uh -huh. Right? Um, what's the goal? Do you have a goal uh, that is other than? I mean, you're making it's a business, yeah, of course, it, but it is a business, and, and it's really trying to show China for what China is. I think there's a lot of misconception by people in the West. I think there's a lot of Westerners who still think China is the China of. 30 or 40 years ago and it, it's not um, so it, it is part to, to try and show really what China is now and also obviously to, to make a living um, so those are the travel travel videos and I guess yeah. the, the Chinese uh, politics uh, um, commentary mm -hmm. uh, it's to show the world pretty much yeah so you're trying to pull more people and maybe people that are not on your side I mean we spoke about it right I I also show China on my on my uh, YouTube channel, but uh -huh. in a different way, I guess. Um, but uh, um, you're trying to make a business and also trying to give people a different perspective and maybe yeah. change their mind about China. Yeah, I, th I think there's there's obviously a lot of. I think in the comments of, of videos, you get the, the the extreme ends of the spectrum. So you get the very anti-China people, you get the very pro-China people. But I think there's a lot of people who sit on the fence who maybe watch some of the anti-China videos and watch some of the... Yeah, I guess so. the, And I think to give that balance, they can then make their own mind up from, from what they're seeing, you know, and, and maybe do a bit of their own fact-checking. Because I think a lot of, in my opinion, a lot of the, the anti-side is just not necessarily always lies, but they'll take something very, very small and say, oh, this is happening all over China. Well, in fact, it's not. Right, you know, right. it's, it's just a small incident. Right. You know? So it's just trying to push back against that, that kind right. of thing. Yeah, like, you know, I, yeah, I think that it's important to show the world China and to talk about the good things, but also to mention that China is not perfect, right? And of there course. are things that are frustrating to us. And Very much so. Like, know, for, for me, it's having to use a VPN being here, you know, for like, example, that frustrates right? the hell out of me. Some of the... The, the sort of administration things, the paperwork things, dealing with authorities, it's frustrating. Now, now one of the reasons that is I don't, I'm not that conversant with Chinese. And also, it's just different to where I've grown up. So I know the systems in the UK pretty much inside out. You know what to expect. But sometimes here, it's like a curveball thrown at you because something happens that you don't right. expect, you right. know. And, and that is frustrating sometimes. Okay, in, so in what, in, in, uh, in what way, you know how we are very long time in China. You've mm -hmm. been coming to China for uh, more than a decade. Yes. Well, I've been here for 18 years plus. You know how we, we, we become a bit Chinese. We always say, between yeah, foreigners, yeah, right? We, we always yeah. say that. We are influenced. In what way you are influenced in China? Oh, like I, those frustrations are a little easier to bear after so many yeah, years. Exactly. When I first came here, I used to, I used to get quite sort of... Um, I wouldn't say angry, but very, very frustrated. But now I've just learned to accept that's the way it is here. Right. And, and just go with the God. And, and maybe that's a thing with age as well. You know, when I was young, I was far more hot-headed. And I sometimes see that in Oliver. Um, you know, I'll hear him say, oh, you know. Uh, Get agitated. Yeah. Yes. And now I've just kind of learned to just accept that's yes. the way it is here in, right. in China. And, and I think it's important that we're guests here. And I think you Very can't important. you can't you can't expect to bring the rules from the UK to here 
and think, oh, I can have all those rules. And I think some foreigners do do that. They struggle with accepting that China has a different set of rules. Right. And I think here, as long as you follow the rules, although that's frustrating to me sometimes, as long as you follow the rules, things get sorted and, and done. It's so know. important to remember that we are guests. I totally agree. And sometimes we forget. And it's not yeah. in a bad way. Like, we, we start to feel like home. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then, uh, like, when, you know, uh, um, the COVID uh, situation and they were a bit worried about foreigners and someone walks away in the street, I got hurt. And I was yeah. thinking about it. And I was thinking, just because I, 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 in a daily life, I feel like it's home. And then I, f but then I have to remember, I'm a guest. Yeah, you know? and, and those Chinese people didn't know whether you'd arrive yesterday or you've been right. here for 10 years. Right. You know, they had no idea. Right. So, and I guess that would be the same in England. What I said back then to people, because I did complain about it, just frustrated, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, I, I thought that if I did arrive yesterday, I would go to quarantine. But, you know, but still, people have to remember that it was way worse against Chinese in the West. Yeah. Here they may walk away from you in the West, uh, not, I mean, not all people, but inc people. the incidents of violence, yeah, yeah. You know, so Absolutely, much worse yeah. that Chinese had to go through, right? Mm -hmm. So if you uh, didn't care about uh, building the channel, it's a full-time job, so you need to think about revenue too and yeah. everything, making a living, right? But if you didn't think about that, what videos would you make? I think we would make less of a higher quality. now. This is where me and Oliver differ because I really like technology, but Oliver's not so keen on that. He likes he, he likes different kinds of video. Sure. Um, yeah. So I, I would probably concentrate on a lot of technology videos. I love to do factory videos, okay. show how things are made and that, but they're not that easy to, to, to get access to those factories sometimes. Some, some companies are very open, others, obviously they might be developing something there they don't want other eyes right. to see. So it is, it is a challenge to get access to those. And the other kind of videos are, are like an infrastructure, you know. I, I, I think China has some of the, the most amazing infrastructure anywhere I've seen. You know, it, it's almost as if they, they'll build infrastructure because it's a new challenge to them. I've seen like bridges and, and tunnels here that are just incredible, you know. So you've done some of them. We have, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've done some of them, and, and I think they do well, uh, right? They do, the, yeah. You know, and you yeah. actually enjoy them, you say. I really do, But yeah, they, they, they obviously require going to places, being time-consuming, yeah. and, and... And costly sometimes. Costly, you know, and yeah. a lot of research. Yeah, trying yeah. Trying to get things right. Because I'm from an engineering and technical background, I, I love getting all that into right. that kind of stuff, right. you know, yeah, it, it interests me. Um, do you watch other YouTubers in China? I do when I have time. Since I've had the uh, cancer diagnosis, I have spent a little bit more time doing that. But normally, it's it's hard to fit it in because it's surprising to upload a video every three days. There's a lot of work behind that. I don't think people always realise how much work. But I do watch a little bit. Yeah. Who do you watch? I watch uh, Guelo. I watch Jason living in China. Um, Matt from the Jio Nation. Those are the, the the three. And then I watch it. Another, a lot of YouTubers who have nothing to do with China. I watch some Lego channels because I'm big into Lego. Right. So. I, I thought you were going to answer with the Lego videos when I asked you about which videos we, you would make. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I have a project where I want to make a, another um, Lego channel. I've actually got one, but there's, there's not a lot on there yet, but there will be in the future. Did you talk about Lego on your channel, on the Baron? No, channel? not really. I've mentioned it a couple of times, um, but I haven't really gone in depth maybe there are it. a bunch of people out there waiting for you to yeah maybe i should maybe yeah. i should do do something because I'm, yeah. I'm very passionate about lego since like five years old you know what are you going to call that it's called bricks and builds bricks and builds yeah okay that's um, cool. the channel is there but i just there's, there's virtually nothing on there yet so. <laughs> all right so um the wumao army uh-huh the wumao army right we uh we said um I say that I think it exists, but I also think that it's normal, that I think that other countries employ the same methods, uh, uh -huh. and uh, uh, sometimes inside the country, I've seen it in my country, political parties against each other yeah. to push propaganda, right? But uh, uh, what do you think about the Wumao army? You had an interesting uh, yeah, perspective. Yeah, I'm not sure whether it exists, but I think, I think Chinese generally are quite um, patriotic, nationalistic. Um, 
And I think even even Chinese people who've grown up abroad are very patriotic. And it's like that, you know, as a Chinese person, you can you can say something negative about your country, but as a foreigner, you shouldn't. And I think that's like if you have a family member and somebody criticizes your mother or your father, you, you don't like that, but you're okay to say it yourself, right. you know. And right. I, I think it's a bit like that. But I think I think probably every country around the world employs, um, you know, uh, propaganda people. Yeah, definitely. So China may is I mean it's a possibility. It's yeah. a possibility. I, mean, I, I I haven't ever seen any evidence of that, you know. But yeah. but it's a possibility. We can prove it the same way that the, those people can prove uh, concentration camps in uh, Xinjiang. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Right. I mean, you know. Uh, And, and I'm, I like to think I've got a very open mind. So right now, I don't believe for one minute there's a genocide going on in Xinjiang. From the evidence I've seen up to now, if in a few months' time some evidence come to light that, wow, I wasn't aware of that, then I, I'm willing to admit that maybe I was wrong. But but I, I try to be very evidence-based, you know? I, I think that absolutely there is no genocide in Xinjiang. But and but the, the 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 problem is the definitions. I mean, you know, one is if you look at the definition of genocide, for sure, that's how I make you know make it clear that there is no. But also concentration camp, right? What is a concentration yeah. camp? You know, that's that's another another thing to uh, to look at. But as as uh, for me at least, as I, as I told Jerry Gray, for example, he talks about not seeing it, right, yes. in Xinjiang, and I also say, Jerry, the fact that you did not see it. It doesn't necessarily mean it doesn't exist. Uh -huh. And Jerry said, of course. Yeah, so, yeah. so, you know, I think a reason, reasonable person, right? Um, uh, I think it's very important, the nuances of how people talk about that, right? Yeah, and I, I think as well, in, in the day and age where there's so many devices to capture video and photos, and we don't have any video or photo evidence of, of anything, right, right. which to me seems very, very odd. If right. it's going on, there would be... Pictures and video, I'm pretty sure. Be, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, yeah, uh, it's... so I, I, I don't think it's going on whatsoever. And, and I think these labels and labels that are given by the West, I think, you know, Mike Pompeo was the, the, the instigator of this. And I almost feel that was a political move for internal politics in the US, to be fair. Right, I understand. Is there anything that you can talk about on your channel that you would like to talk about? I mean, we are in China after all. Yeah, I, I sometimes... I mean, even in other countries, there are things that you may choose not to talk about because of, you know... Yeah, I think, I think sometimes here the media is a little bit sensitive and I think they should be less sensitive, you know. Um, right. They should know that not every time, every time we say something that is criticizing, it doesn't mean we don't like yes. the country yeah. it doesn't mean we don't support the country right yeah. yeah yeah so so there might be sometimes things that yeah yeah you have to obviously steer around some, some things let's say uh, diplomatically you know right so you'd be more sensitive for it yeah. right so if you weren't a youtuber what would you do now what what do you think you would have hmm. <laughs> I'd be doing some sort of trading, trading. selling goods yeah I've, you did I've, it before right I've done that for many years and, and I kind of enjoy that um, you like that Okay. Yeah, I kind of like trading, but I enjoy what I'm doing now. You I, do? I, yeah, I, I prefer this. Uh, what are the things you don't like about China? Like, <laughs> other than, you know, they said the frustrations, but I mean, uh, you know, it could be that there are things that you didn't like, but you just got used to it, so you don't even think about them anymore. So it's yeah, hard to... I, think, I think I have an issue with the food in southern China. It's not food. my style of food. Okay. I like I like sort of more central. Like I love the food in Shanghai because it's sweeter. But you can probably get it here, right? Yeah, yeah. it's not as good though. Ah, okay. uh, and I like the food in, in northern China, the sort of lamb and the you know the that, that kind of stuff. Right. Okay. And uh, um, let's talk a little bit about that on your on your arm there. Okay. Right? So you 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 were diagnosed a few months yeah. ago, right? And you've done some uh, 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 treatments. I had some chemotherapy, right. yes. And you actually, in a few days... Yeah, I'll be going into hospital to have surgery to remove the tumor. Right. Um, and then they will do a skin graft over the right. Because actually the chemotherapy hasn't had the desired effect. And how do you feel doing all of this treatment in China and the surgery? I feel a little bit nervous because 
it will be the first time I've had any kind of surgery outside of the UK. But on the other hand, I feel very confident. I've, I've had very good care so far and I've been impressed with the level of care and attention I've received here. So I have no, no complaints. And I actually feel here surgeons are very qualified. That They see a lot of patients. So I think they have a, a lot of experience. So I have no concerns there whatsoever. Right, you think you're getting good care, yeah? Absolutely. Yeah. But I think it's one of the things maybe people outside of China also think that it's not good uh, uh, medical yeah, 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 yeah. And, and I think that's a, that's a myth. I think you know that trying to have a population of 1.4 billion, most of those doctors and surgeons probably see many more cases than than their Western equivalents. So it's kind of that thing: practice makes perfect. You know, it's, right. uh, they've had a lot right. of experience. Okay. Um, so the last thing I want to ask you is: uh -huh. uh, uh, can you tell me one thing that people don't know about you? <laughs> um, one thing that people don't know It's about hard because me. you have a YouTube channel, so you say yeah, you already tell them Probably anything. the biggest thing that people don't know is my passion for Lego. Right. Yeah, there's, there's not that many people. Now, I've, I've mentioned it very briefly, but most people probably have no idea. All right. Idea. Uh, why are we saying it? We should probably put the, uh, uh, some B-roll of, uh, of your Lego. <laughs> of your Lego yeah, yeah. All right, Lee. Well, thanks for talking. Um, You're welcome. It's great. We could have talked more for hours on the video, but we just did that for hours yeah, before the yeah. video. <laughs> so uh, if you like this content, please give the video a like so I can reach more people on my channel and consider subscribing. Until I see you next time, have a great day. Take care.